Hello, this is Bashar. In this tutorial, we are going to add internationalization functionality to our Express application. And with that, we will be supporting multiple languages and returning messages back to the user's requests. As usual, the repo for this tutorial is right here. We are going to start our implementation from this i18n start. And the content of this tutorial is in this branch i18n final. The project is opened right here in the VS Code. And let's go over the project structure. The application is evolving and you can check the previous steps in the previous tutorials. And basically, we have this dependencies, the Express application, we are using Express well data. We are using SQLize for the ORM and we have this SQLite. And we have this app right here. We have user and article endpoints. And in the user endpoint, we have the REST handlers for adding user, getting user, user list, and the user, individual user, and updating and deleting user. And right here, when we are adding a user in this REST handler, we are returning this message back. Now we are going to change this and we will be returning the message in the selected language and we will be receiving that information in the incoming request. For this functionality, we are going to use a library i18 next. And with this library, we will use two more helper library. And one of them is this one, i18 next fs backend. We are going to store the translations in file system and to load those translations, this dependency will be working. And we will use this HTTP middleware. And in the request, the language of the user will be received in accept language header. And this library will be checking the header and informing the i18 next accordingly. So let's install these dependencies first. So opening a terminal here and running npm install i18 next i18 next dash fs dash backend and i18 next http dash middleware. Now let's configure this i18 next and let's do this in this app.js. First, let's import i18 next coming from this i18 next and we will be getting, let's get it as backend from this i18 next fs backend and we will be getting the middleware dependency by the way, I have a typo here, require, require i18 next HTTP middleware. Now we are going to create our own i18 next configuration here. And this is going to be using the backend, this one. And it is going to be using the middleware and this middleware has language detector. And we will init this with this configuration. And the configuration will be simple. We will be uh, setting a default language and this is going to be fallback LNG. And let's say the fallback language will be English. And the next configuration is we are going to store the translations in file and we will set the file path. And for that we set backend. And in this backend we are setting an object and it has this load path. And we can set the path right here. And let's say the, the folders will be under uh, the root directory of the application and there will be locales folder in it. And let's have this part dynamically. And the LNG is 
representation of the selected language. So for English, this is going to be EN. For Turkish, it's going to be TR, like that. And under that folder, there will be translation JSON file. And we are going to call app use, and we want it to use this i18 next. And we do that by middleware handle i18 next. So the configuration is like this. Let's create a folder right here in the root directory. And this is locales, the folder we are setting right here. And in this folder, we will have en. This is for English. And in en, we will have translation JSON. And in this JSON object, we will have the translation key and values. Now let's run the application. And in user router, here we have this post endpoint, and this is returning just this message. Let's try this one in Postman. So here, sending a request. The request body is like this. And let's go with an existing user like this one, user 100. And here it is returning this message. Now let's make this translated to different languages. Here in translation JSON, let's add a key and value for this scenario. And the key is user create success. And let's say the message will be user is created. And in user router, we can use this message like this. The middleware of this i18 next is adding a function to request. So from request, we can get that translation functionality and that function is t, request t. And by passing this translation key like this, we would be getting the message based on the selected language. So let's save these changes and let's send another request. And here we can see user is created. Now let's change the format of this message. Let's make sure we are returning a JSON and we have this message field and it has this value. So sending the request once again and here we are receiving this message user is created. Now let's send the request for different languages. And for that one, we are going to add another translation JSON and let's create a folder for that one. And I'm adding the folder for Turkish, my language, and just copying this translation JSON and pasting to TR folder. And here in this one, locales TR translation JSON, just adding the Turkish version of this message. So it is something like this and saving this one. Now to get this message back, all we need to do is tell that we are using the language Turkish and we do that in the request header, accept language and the language is TR. And here we are receiving this message. So basically, this is the way of how it is working. So we can use this T function to translate these keys to the selected languages. For exceptions, we can do the similar thing. For instance, we have this user not found exception and it has this static message. And instead of this one, we can go with a translated message. And let's say uh, we are going to use a key user not found exception and let's use this key in translation files so this is the english version user not found and adding the translation to this one so whenever this exception is thrown this user not found exception is thrown and it is thrown right here in the get user.
So when we are getting a user with unknown ID, let's try it in Postman first. So like this one, getting a user and let's say the ID will be something like this. Here we are receiving this message and this message is being generated in error handler right here. Corresponding response body is generated right here. And this one is also having this request so we can access to the translation function and we can translate that message accordingly. Now, since we are using this key, this message will have this key so we can call rec t with the message and this will end up with the translated version of this message. So trying with postman. So sending the request, we are not setting any language yet. We are receiving this message. And if we set the header of accept language with this tr, here we are receiving this message. We also have another exception right here. This one is invalid ID exception and this is thrown when the ID we are receiving in this get parameter. If this is not a number, this exception is thrown invalid ID. We can do the same thing in this one. So we can just replace this message with a key and we can set values for that key both in these translation files. Same thing can also be done for the validation exception. Here we have the message. Let's do this one. Let's say this is going to be validation exception and let's have corresponding key in the translation files. Invalid request body and in the other translation file we will have this one. Now the validation exception is having this key and we are expecting it to be translated accordingly. So let's send an invalid request to our application. Now let's go with the default language first. And in body, let's not send a username. So here we are receiving this invalid request body. But if we change the language and go with the Turkish, here we are receiving this message. But obviously, this translation is not enough because we are returning validation errors and we can translate them too. So for these texts, they are set right here in the validation part. We are looking for a username. If it is empty, the mes this message is uh, set for this error. And we have the other messages. So we can just replace these texts with keys. So let's do that. Let's say this is going to be username null. And we are going to use this username underscore null. And this one, username underscore size, username underscore size with this message. And the next one is this one, must be a valid email address. Let's say email invalid. And let's use that one here, email invalid. And the last one is this email underscore in use email in use this one and just copying and pasting them to tr and just adding the translations now we have the translations and these validation errors are once again uh, processed in this error handler. Right here, we are taking the errors object coming from this error and the validation exception is having these errors. And we basically, we are looping in this array. This is an array of errors and creating this validation errors object 
and this is having this key and this is the, the actual message now we replace these messages with the keys so we can again use request t to translate them so saving all these changes and let's try with postman once again currently the language is tr and let's go back to buddy and let's send the existing email address here we are receiving the validation errors in that language and if we change the language just uh, going without any accept language header and this is returning all text in english so that's it for this tutorial that's how we can use this i18 next in an express application and use translation and thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorials